Hello, this is Susan at Shipwreck Beats. Today we are going to make a what we call a candy bracelet. Now, it's because these beads are called candy, is why we call that a candy bracelet. Um, they've got two holes in them, so we need to find a connector that will allow us to go from two to one, which is what these are. And then the candy itself is just a flat backed bead that we're going to put beads in between some crystal to give it some sparkle and also to separate the beads so you get a really nice bend. If we didn't put beads in between it'd be much more stiff and not be so comfortable to wear. And you can see you can do this in whichever finish you prefer using. Uh, this one happens to be gold um, or you can do them in silver uh, with different colored beads or whichever you prefer. I'm pretty much a silver gal so I make every Everything in silver um, and I like things to be in threes so I mean look at what that does on your wrist I mean it's just it's fantastic you get that really lovely sparkle it's really soft to wear with those flat backs so the crystals are actually up off your skin you're not feeling them and then of course you're not feeling any of any of your findings uh, so it's just a really nice comfortable set to wear uh, so we've got these and I wanted to just point out the different ends that you can get this is a two to one connector um, that is in silver it also comes in gold and then you've got that a little bit fancier so this one has like the the row of bumps and it's a little bit beefier um, so you've got that one and then this little guy that we're going to use today uh, it's just a very smooth kind of looks like a football with a couple of eyes uh, but the real point here is that you've got a choice depending on what you like to see uh, if you like just a smooth finish or very plain um, or just get fancy with it with some fun bumps uh, all of those are of course the the bumpy bar so um, all of them are really good choices so you can really choose how you want to personalize your piece uh, so feel free there and then I've got my uh, my wire here that we are going to make connectors to go from that one eye to an eye for the lobster or an eye to grab the lobster that you're going to have on the other end. So I think the easiest way to start this is to actually get the connectors on first. So um, if you don't already have uh, some wire, this is just a, a 22 gauge so it's a little beefy um, if you've got some 22 20 works so does 24 but it gets a little bit thin once you get that uh, that small in diameter so I really prefer like a 20 or 22 when I'm making connectors uh, so you can tell mine is well loved it's got my thumb hole in here so I can pull my wire off uh, we're gonna cut off a couple inches for each end or you can use a flathead uh, head pin and just cut that head off and use that bit of hardened wire so we are going to use a bit of tools in this one I've got my wire Wire cutter so I can cut off my two lengths of wire for the connectors and let's get those attached first you can do it after you're done so if you forget and say oops I, I was supposed to make a connector for that uh, no worries you can do it after you're done I just think it's easier to have my endings already done so with this connector you've got a pretty small eye here so I'm going to go uh, pretty far up on the head of my round nose here and get that the eye made and then just slip it in there grab it with my chain nose and get that first part wrapped Just cut off that excess. And then smooth that down. And then this is going to be the end that will take the lobster. So I just need to make another eye. And this one I'm going to go up pretty far 
on here because I want a nice big eye to put the lobster through when all is said and done. So that's a pretty good sized eye. I am using a swivel lobster. I pretty much use only swivel lobsters, um, especially when it comes to bracelets, because I can put my uh, my bracelet on and hunt for that eye and get it hooked without everything going all um, twisted on me. The swivel keeps it from twisting, so that's fabulous. And cut off that excess. But those really fly, so be so careful when you're cutting off your ends. And just smoothing that down. Give it a feel. Yep, nice and smooth. So that's the end that will take the lobster. And then let's make another one to hold it. And again, an eye on the smaller side to connect to the two to one connector. Now I've got a seven and a half inch wrist, so I'm using nine of the candy beads. If your wrist is smaller or um, larger, then you do want to compensate for that. The um, These come in different size packaging, not sure why. Uh, the white and gold uh, comes in a 12 piece package, but the turquoise and red comes in 48 pieces, which is kind of awesome if you're looking to make you something as well as somebody else. Um, or if you want to make three <laughs> like I do and still have some left over to make one for somebody else. Uh, gosh, what a fun fun project this is. Fairly quick, don't need a whole lot of parts. And let's just cut off that excess. There we go and tamp that side down. And then we'll make the eye. And I'm just going to make this one large as well so it matches the other side. You don't really need all that much room to put a lobster claw on, but I like them to be even. There we go, nice large eye, and here's my lobster. You can see it's got that fun swivel end. Love these. There we go, it just slips right on. And we'll close that up. And there we go. We've got our connectors on our connectors. <laughs> okay, so you can see you've got just a really nice large eye here to put your lobster through. And because we've got those larger eyes on both ends, it just makes it nice and even looking with a smaller eye going into our two to one connectors. Okay, and so let's go ahead and get this started. Um, you want to cut off about 12 inches of wire. Um, I usually get carried away and cut off way more than I need so I don't have to fight closing it. You know, I bury the ends, and so I want to have enough room to be able to see that and um, 
and not have to fight my wire. So you're going to need four crimps, two for each wire for each end. I've got my two 12 inches and actually it's probably more like 15 inches of wire cut off. I'm using just a seven uh, strand beetle on wire here. It's 0.012 diameter so it's fairly thin. These don't weigh a whole lot so you don't need a whole lot of strength going on. I really like 0.012 uh, it fits nicely in my crimp tubes. I can double up and make a, a double or triple strand something and have it still fit through my crimp tubes. I just like this size. Um, I rarely go with a 19 strand unless I'm making something fairly heavy. Usually that would be more on a necklace type of thing um, that I pretty much stick with a 7 strand. But if you're doing something like... Um, a uh, stone which would be much heavier than glass and that's what these are just glass with some crystals in between so fairly lightweight and you've got two strands that are that are taking the weight uh, so you just don't need to have 19 strand to make something like this that seven will certainly do and I pretty much always use silver and so that's what the majority of my findings are but of course I've got access to the whole store so I do use uh, for something like this one that was done in gold the white and gold one I still use silver wire for it and my silver crimp tubes and instead I put a gold crimp covers test both of those ends I put gold crimp covers on the end so you'd never know I used silver there uh, a nice trick to know if you only want to invest in in one tone of your uh, crimps and, and wire and things like that you can always hide what color that finish is with your crimp covers so I do have a full uh, library of gold and gunmetal and all of that when it comes to the crimp covers and and then I pretty much use silver wire and silver crimps. All right, let me move these out of the way. Those were just samples on what other kinds of ends you could get. Some really fun ones there. And I've got my wire. Let's grab some beads. And some crystals. Now these are Preciosa crystal. Um, Swarovski, gorgeous as well. You just get this beautiful bump of, of sparkle and, and wonderfulness. Love them. So pretty much when I'm deciding what I'm going to use, whether it be Preciosa or Swarovski, they are both crystal. And so you do get a bigger punch of sparkle than you do with, say, fire polished glass. Um, I pretty much go with whoever has the right color that I'm looking for rather than and the brand. Uh, both of them are going to be gorgeous. Swarovski is a little bit better well known uh, and so they charge a little bit more. They've also got some color combinations that you don't see in other uh, say Preciosa or other crystal makers. Uh, that they patent their colors. They're, they're gorgeous uh, and so are Preciosa. So really it's whatever best matches your beads is, is how I fall on that one. Uh, so we're going to put bicones first. You can use a smooth here uh, or like a faceted round rather than a bicone. I happen to like the bicone shape and I like to put different shapes against each other. So where this one is a flat smooth round, uh, having the facets of a bicone it just makes it stand out that much more to me. Uh, but you can certainly use whatever shape you want here. These guys are just three millimeters, so they're very small. Uh, and again, we're pretty much using them just as a spacer against our uh, candy beads so they don't bump up against each other and they give us more curve. So I've got my bicones on first. That's what's going to sit next to my crimps. And then we're going to thread a candy on on each side and you sure know when you got it upside down because the bottom is flat and it doesn't have the pattern 
that these do with that little swirly thing going on uh, the bottom does not have it it's just the smooth color which makes it so comfortable to wear turn that over oops I'm twisting up my wires there we go and just getting those ends buried in and then just a bicone per line and our candy and we're gonna do that until we've got like I said mine is nine uh, beads or the candies and you'll want to adjust that depending on your wrist size I like them a little loose too so mine's nine and then you've got all of this end that you need to make sure you're compensating for and get that in on the sizing by the time you get both of these ends and the lobster on uh, you've got quite a bit of length happening there and so you just want to make sure you're taking that into consideration when you are building yours Now I do leave about two inches of wire that needs to be buried as we go along. It gives your piece more strength to have these ends buried rather than just cut off at the crimps. If you're finding that your stuff is falling apart at the crimps, that could be why if you're cutting the tails off. It can be a little bit of a challenge uh, getting the tails worked back in, but my gosh, if for some reason your crimp decides to loosen up on you, uh, it's going to lose everything unless you have this extra bit of wire tucked in that will keep it from uh, completely falling apart. You'll have a chance to catch it before it does that. So again with the two bicones. And then of course if you like more of a lattice look, <clears throat> pardon me, more space in between your beads, you can certainly add in uh, two or three more bicones to give it more space. You could add a bicone and maybe uh, a round or something and then another bicone and then your candy. There just is no reason why you can't just play with this design but um, mine when I first made the, the red ones uh, my goal was to show off the beads not the not what went in between them and so I just really wanted this thick wall of candy I still have a little bit of end to bury there You see that one came off, so I'm just redoing the bicone. There it goes, and there we go. Phew! Well, that makes it faster now that we don't have anything to have to bury on the other side. And that one. And then our candy. What a good name for these. They look like little candies just makes you want to eat them up and then of course we all say don't eat the beets
somebody is jumping out here that is not staying tight against there. I suspect it's a wire end that's doing that. And yep, there it is. There we go. And now, now it's not jumping on this side. Okay, so we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So three to go. You see, I pretty much always try to pick my beads up with the end of the wire rather than in my fingers. It's they, It can just grab onto that hole and pick right up. When it's a larger bead like this or I'm trying to uh, make sure it's staying on the right side, then I'll go ahead and pick them up rather than just stab through with the wire and pick them up. But um, pretty much smaller ones. Your wire is going to be strong enough to just find the hole and go through it and pick it up for you. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You've heard that saying measure it twice, cut once. I kind of feel like the same thing really um, applies to beading as well. Just when you think you've got the right count um, and you get it all finished, and then you find that one or two beads that you had dropped or had kind of rolled to the side and now you have to take it apart because it won't fit it's too small or whatever uh, we do need the other half of our connector what happened to that we need up oh, there you are okay so crimp bead as our last bead on both sides Just come up through your connector. And just checking to make sure it is not going weird on us. Uh, these Tierra Cast connectors are really fabulous. They have the design on both sides, so you really can't get it upside down like can happen with so many other things and there's my tail on that one these I'm just gonna hold it up so I get every bit of slack out of there and gosh darn it has that one jumped out again I don't see where the wires hanging out go ahead and crimp those crimp tubes I'm coming up through the center of this to get that first good squeeze in go. And then of 
course we always test our crimps and that's a nice good hold you can see how much I always overcut my wire Now, if you're going to add a charm, now is when you would do that. Um, you would add your charm to your lobster end so it's not getting uh, involved with your uh, trying to get a class. You can see here I went with, um, oh, and I put it on the wrong end, uh, with fish, a little, just a little fish charm because these remind me of, of little seashells. Um, so I put fish on mine. You can certainly put a charm on here to really give it a, a fully finished look. You can put crimp covers on again to give it a fully finished look. With your bicones only being three millimeters, I'm not liking the way that end is working there. Uh, because your bike cones are only three millimeters, you really have to be careful that you go with a smaller crimp cover so it totally doesn't overwhelm uh, your project. But, I mean, is that just a fun, fast, easy project? You've got it made. You're ready to go to the beach or wherever you want to wear your fun shell spirals. Alrighty, that is it for this project. Make a couple of more because they look great as a threesome. <laughs> to wear them all at once. Maybe I'll have to start wearing five and have all, all three colors going on. Um, so, happy beating to you and have a great day.